How's it going everyone? It's Avi from Weather Spawn Drop Thousand and today we're gonna forecast the 2022 summer for the United States. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content. So to first begin with this summer forecast, we need to take a look at several different factors that will determine what type of summer we'll experience. And the first and one of the biggest factors we need to take a look at is the Enzo outlook. And you see that during the summer months between June, July, and August, and even through September, the most likely scenario is that we will be in a neutral phase but during the months of August and September you see that the forecast does become a little bit more uncertain because you see that the um, chance of a neutral phase drops down below a 50 um, percent threshold which means that there is a possibility that maybe it could be a La Nina as well once we get more certainty with the forecast or who knows although the chance is low there is a small chance of a El Nino which is up to 20 percent by September September. However, it seems like the most likely scenario for this summer will be that we will experience a neutral phase and if not then uh, maybe a week La Nina at the very least as it seems likely that during the months of June and July we will experience a neutral phase and that should continue until August and September most likely with maybe a La Nina phase um, being more likely during those months and if I were to show you guys the what typically happens during uh, Enzo neutral pattern for the United States. So you see that it's we typically see a very pronounced jet stream dip during an Enzo neutral pattern. This is in the winter, so the jet stream dip isn't as pronounced as the summer because, of course, the jet stream is a lot further northward thanks to how much how much more shore wave radiation the northern hemisphere experience. So as a result, the unstable air stays well to the north of the United States Canada border. So the jet stream doesn't dip that far south however we will certainly see air um times where it does maybe get a little bit cooler than average especially towards the midwest as a result of maybe um troughs moving through from can from canada into the united states and you see that typically during a neutral pattern we see warmer than average conditions throughout the southern united states this extends from the west coast as f and all the way to the east coast of the southern united states where it's typically a lot warmer than average and another thing too is that it's typically a lot more moist than average right around the southeast and i think it's also could be as a direct result of the fact that the warmer temperatures will raise the temperatures throughout the Gulf of Mexico and the Western Atlantic. So as a result, it's um, we're bound to see a lot more lift in the atmosphere right around Southeast. And of course, you know that during the summer when the winds face from a direction where it's going directly over the ocean, you're bound to receive thunderstorm activity throughout the Southeast. So I definitely do think it should be a more moist than average summer for the southeastern United States as a result of uh, overall warmer and more moist than average um, conditions you typically experience during a uh, neutral pattern as well as warmer than average sea surface temperatures which I'll show you in a little bit and you see that the west coast also experiences warmer and drier than average conditions and if we were to take a look at La Nina you see it's fairly similar to what an Enzo pattern looks like but there are some key differences for example we typically see um, it be a little bit more drier towards the southeast rather than a little bit more moist um, than, um, which is different from what typically happens during a neutral season and you see that the jet stream dip I'd say is a little bit less pronounced for the northeast as a cold air mainly um, impacts those in the northern midwest rather than the northeast so that's another thing to keep in mind but very similar patterns overall and i think the more likely scenario this summer is that we will be in an enzo neutral pattern so it's safe to forecast that our summer will look similar to this but that's far from the only factor that will determine what type of summer you will experience um, throughout the united states because of course sea stir temperatures matter the drought um, the current drought monitor matters a lot when determining what type of conditions you'll experience in the summer. So we need to take a look at those other factors before we jump to that conclusion that this Enzo neutral pattern will exactly play out the way it should. Um, now take a look at what the computer models are saying. The CFS climatology computer model. It's another big factor when determining 
um, temperature anomalies as well as precipitation anomalies. And you see that currently the CFS model for the pretty much the entirety of the United lower 48 of the United States. You guys, um, the, uni the United States is expected to experience warmer than average temperatures with uh, more with a higher degree right around Texas, Oklahoma, and the southern Midwest pretty much where temperatures are well above average as I do believe that this is as a result of the climatology models taking in the taking in the drought situation for the western portion of the United States because typically what happens during a drought like I said in my previous video is that not only is it drier than average but typically it's a lot warmer than average because for one thing of course there's gonna during a drought there's gonna be less um clouds in the sky so you're less likely to ex um so short wave radiation is more likely to uh, get absorbed by the surface rather than get reflected back into space by clouds or get absorbed by the clouds and another thing too is that typically during a drought the soil is a lot more dry and arid and that means that and what and the lack of moisture pretty much means that the surface will absorb a lot more short wave radiation because when there's a lot of moisture the moisture absorbs a lot of that short wave radiation and pretty much uses that energy to break to phase change that liquid into a gas which is water vapor um so when there isn't a lot of moisture to do that to waste that short wave radiation on phase changing um the liquid into a gas that means that a lot more that short wave radiation will be absorbed by the surface rather than get wasted by trying to phase change um, water on the surface. So that's why moisture and uh, um, a drought definitely matters when making these forecasts. And you see that for a lot of the United States, especially in the areas stricken with a drought in the southern Midwest, you're much more likely to receive um, warmer than average conditions. And taking a look at the um, taking a look at the um, precipitation anomalies, you see that again in the drought stricken regions, you're expected to receive drier than average conditions, and most of the United States, in fact, is expected to receive drier than average conditions. I do, um, um, while it, it does state that the southeast will experience drier than average conditions, I think the fact that we're in an enzo neutral pattern, which typically does bring more more moist than average conditions for the southeast as well as the fact that sea surface temperatures are warmer than average so we're more likely to see an unstable environment throughout the southeast i do believe that we're still in for a more moist than average year for the southeast especially since the hurricane season is expected to be a little bit more active so it is safe to expect a little bit more chops moving through even if they're not necessarily considered tropical cyclones um or hurricanes so um, I do still expect to be more moist than average, but I'd say anywhere maybe west of the Mississippi River Valley, I think more likely than not, you guys will experience a drier and warmer than average year. While for the northeast, I expect it to be primarily average when it comes to precipitation, not necessarily dry, but not necessarily too moist either, as I don't expect that um um i don't expect that it's going to be so dry or so much more moist despite the southeast maybe being a little bit more moist so i think that's definitely something to keep in mind the precipitation anomalies cfs models forecasting where it's expecting most of the united states to be drier than average especially west of the mississippi river valley now let me show you guys a drought monitor so you see that um, a lot of areas along the west coast and areas like I said just west of the Mississippi River Valley are experiencing um, conditions much drier than average for the year where the drought is just dominating a lot of these states and as a result um, I do expect it to be warmer and drier than average because like I said when there isn't moisture on the surface a lot of that short rate rate um, short wave radiation from the sun isn't wasted on phase changing liquid to a uh, gas um, or water vapor because there isn't enough moisture on the surface for that um, energy to be wasted on that so all that energy will be absorbed by the surface and that will definitely make for a much warmer than average um, summer for a lot of the western United States while for the eastern United States 
Um, it is drier than average for portions of the southeast, but I don't expect that to continue as a result of uh, more moist than a uh, uh, warmer than average sea surface temperatures along the Gulf of Mexico and east western Atlantic. So I don't expect it to last, and I don't expect. And I do expect it to be more moist than average as a result of uh, pronounced jet stream dip, but we're going to see a lot of instability in this region. So I do expect the drought to go away in the southeast, but for the west coast, I expect it to remain, which would mean that you're in for a much warmer and drier than average summer for a lot of the western United States. Now, let me show you guys the temperature anomalies, which is, like I said, another big determinant in what type of conditions you experience at. The Atlantic, right now, the sea surface temperatures are warmer than average, and it's expected to continue into the summer. So, um, which would mean that, and um, and the sea surface temperatures play a huge role in terms of what type of pattern you experience when it comes to temperature um, and even moisture for a, a, the entire world. And since we're seeing warmer than average sea surface temperatures along the coast. It's safe to say that temperatures will overall be warmer than average for those along the east coast as well as the Gulf Coast thanks to the sea surface temperatures raising up the temperatures along the coast. So I do expect it to be warmer than average for majority of the United States um, as a result of this. And for the west coast, I do expect the um, temperatures to be warmer than average as a result of the drought conditions going on. So I think for a lot of the United States, it's going to be a much warmer than average winter with maybe the northern Midwest being the exception as a result of a jet stream dip that's typically, that typically occurs during a um, neutral phase. But for most of the lower 48, it should be a much warmer than average summer um for 2022 now let me show you guys my summer forecast for this year so um for the for the southeast i'm expecting it to be more warm and moist than average this is as a result of a jet stream dip that's simply pronounced during a enzo neutral pattern and of course the sea surface temperatures are warmer than average so i expect a more humid environment overall and of course the hurricane season is expected to be a little bit more active. So I do expect maybe a tropical cyclone or two could get you guys out of a drought this summer. And it should be a more moist than average year as a result of how much lift and unstable air there is as a result of warmer than average sea surface temperatures. And I expect it to be warmer than average for the northeast because of warmer than average sea surface temperatures, cooler the average um, for the northern Midwest as a result of an Enzo neutral pattern and pronounced jet stream dip. Very hot and dry for the West Coast because of the drought you're currently in, um, which will lead to warmer than average conditions and drier than average conditions. So, and I expect that to continue into the summer. So, make sure to stay um, prepared throughout the summer and enjoy a warmer average summer for most of the United States. But I thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of the latest content. And I hope you guys all have a great day and enjoy your summer.